I saw a performance, my first ballet performance that I saw, I was 12, and it was London Festival Ballet performing in Melbourne, uh, The Sleeping Beauty, with Rudolf Nureyev dancing The Prince. So I went and saw that and was just blown away by it. I remember clapping so hard, my hands were red raw. And I knew from that, that moment on that that's what I was going to do. I was going to be a dancer and that one day I'd dance the Prince in Sleep and Beauty. You know, dancing all over the world, dancing in New York at the Met, dancing at the Mariansky in, in St. Petersburg and also uh, Covent Garden in London. I had a very rich, rewarding career as a dancer, probably too many highlights to sort of talk about them all. Also having a quite an intense sort of uh, partnership with Lisa Pavan um, as dancers that, uh, you know, we were quite in demand around guesting and stuff like that. So that, that was a highlight, having that special partnership, which you don't always have as a dancer with uh, somebody else. So. As a choreographer, I've had a fabulous highlight was creating my first uh, full-length ballet, Sleeping Beauty. Never having sort of done that before, not really knowing whether I was going to be able to really pull it off and all of that self-doubt that comes in, you know, when you're creating something. But it's been a highlight of my choreographic career. Ballet is still quite a young art form, you know, compared to music and compared to art and compared to lots of other things. It's quite relatively young and uh, it's still evolving. And I think that that is what keeps it popular and keeps it stimulating for the people that not only go and watch it, but the people that are making new dance as well. There's always a new generation of dancers, choreographers, designers, you know, composers that, that can keep bringing so much creativity to the art form that uh, I, I, I don't see it ending any time. There does reach a time in, in your career where you've achieved the things that you need to achieve and, and it, it's a short lifespan as a dancer. So you do have to be quite sort of proactive about thinking about your life past dancing. And, and my thoughts had always been that I wanted to stay in the, in the business and stay in the industry. I hadn't ever seen myself as necessarily being a choreographer, but I, I started off teaching and then being a ballet master. And I started dabbling in a little bit of choreography just before I stopped dancing. And it was something that I really enjoyed doing. So when the opportunities have come up to choreograph, I've jumped on them and uh, I guess now I can call myself a choreographer as well. I really love all of those challenges that go along with it. As a dancer, I got to work with some fabulous people, both choreographers, coaches, artistic directors, and they've all influenced me uh, and still are influencing me. Petipa, Balanchine, Killian, McMillan, Glenn Tetley. They, these are all people that I've had the pleasure of working with as well and, um, you know, have influenced me as a choreographer, I think, and keep influencing me.